All right, we're going to be doing activity 1.3.5, documenting a design. Now, documenting is something that is super important as an engineer, especially whenever you're designing something completely new, because whenever you have a part that nobody's ever seen before, uh, or you're just trying to introduce talking to them about a part, you're going to need to write down some information about that part or try to provide some detail upon the part itself. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a part that has already been created, and we're going to use that part inside of our software to create a drawing and to document some of that design. So the first thing what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to download the Trammel Toy crank arm from the first part. We're going to be using this drawing in order to create our documentation. So if you are using Onshape like me, then this is a Fusion 360 file and it totally won't work. So if you're using Onshape, uh, in the description below in the video, I'm going to post a step file that you can use to import into Onshape. So if you don't have me for class, but you're using this as Onshape anyway in engineering, feel free to use that file. Um, if you're in my class, then if you check the coursework section, that link will be there too. Although if you're watching this video, you can just as easily get it from the description and you'll be just fine. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to download this file. So click on this or click on the link in the bottom of the description. I'm going to click on Documents, I'm going to go to IED Practice, and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to create a document, and I'm going to call it 1.3.5 Documenting a Design. And I'm going to click OK. It's going to load up its wonderful spinny wheel and get us to the blank screen. Uh, so we have a blank workspace here. There's no part. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to import that part. I'm going to click on the bottom left side of the screen, and I'm going to click the plus sign, and I'm going to click Import. When I click Import, it's going to say, hey, what do you want to import? Apparently, I called this file Trammel Beam. So we're going to upload the Trammel Beam, and I'm going to hit Open. And it should say, hey, do you want to import this document? Or, hey, do you want to combine this to a single part studio? I'm just going to import it to this document. I'm going to select the one on the left. So it should load up here as part of our documents. You're going to see this little tab come down here that says CAD Imports. That's where your file that got uploaded is going to be. Uh, it is going to go through a little bit of a process to translate. So right now, as long as it says in this top right, if it says importing dot dot dot, uh, it's still going. And then eventually it's going to say that it was translated successfully. So that's what we're going to wait for. And whenever it says that, you should have a tab down here at the bottom that says Trammel Beam. Go ahead and click on that and it will load up and it will have a part for us that we didn't have to do anything for. That makes me kind of happy because we've been making a lot of parts and to just have one like right there, that's good. I like that. Um, it's a little cattywampus on the side, but you know what? We're just making a drawing of it, so we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, all right, so the next thing that we want to do is let's go in and look and see what's going on. Um, it starts to talk a little bit about a title block. My class will have a custom template that I'm going to give you guys that will be used for a title block. Uh, but if you don't have me for class, then the title block is basically just this space down at the bottom that fills in as much information as you can about the part. And the good thing about using this on a computer is that a lot of these things, uh, if you're using your own account and your own files, a lot of these get uploaded automatically. So you don't have to type all of this stuff in. For the title of the part, it'll automatically upload the part. For the created by, it'll write your name. Um, for the document status and the drawing number, it'll automatically fill those things out. So a lot of these different parts down here uh, in your title block will automatically already be filled out inside the object. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, since I only have a size A printer for the A paper, I'm not going to use a B size sheet. I'm going to just make an A sized. And I'm going to provide the title block to my class, so uh, you're not going to have to make your own uh, if your teacher makes you make your own. Uh, there are YouTube videos on that where other people go through the custom creation process. Uh, you should go look up those YouTube videos because they're really helpful in Onshape, uh, and it'll show you how to work things out. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm just going to give it out to people. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to make a detail view. So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to create a new drawing. So I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to hit create drawing. And since I'm using a custom template for my class, for right now, uh, I'm just going to use a template that has a paper and it's in inches. So I'm going to click OK. 
it's going to load up something with a, a generic title block down at the bottom and I'll show you how some of the stuff just automatically gets filled in. If you look down here at the bottom there are several different things that automatically get put in there. Uh, my name gets put in there, the date gets put in there, the title will get put in there, the paper size gets put in, the scale gets put in, the drawing number, all of these things whenever I load it in will automatically be put into the setting. So I'm just going to click on my part that we made, that we imported, didn't make, and see how it says view scale 3 to 1? Um, that is going to tell us the proportion that we're going to be dealing with, and I think that looks decent. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to just click, and then I'm going to click on the uh, side view. I'm going to give it a little chance to load. Oh, no, that's way too huge. That is way too huge. I may have lied. Okay, I'm going to go back. Go back, go back. Abort mission. Abort mission. So my scale, whenever I uploaded this, was way too big. So if you do that and you're like, oh, crap, what do I do now? You can go back to placing a view by going to the top left and clicking Insert View. And whenever you do that, you can write the scale in here. And that scale was 3 to 1. Um, let's make it like 1 to 2 or something like that. I'm going to insert. I'm going to click on my part. And um, 1 to 2 might actually be a little small. I'm going to change this back around. How about 1 to, how about one, to 1? I'm going to go, here we go. Um, and if I click on that, what does it do for me? That's kind of tiny. But on the flip side... I can actually have a side view that doesn't look crazy. And I should be able to make a top view that doesn't look crazy either. Uh, I might actually be getting a little bit too too much uh, distance on my top view. Oh, look at that cattywampus thing. That's okay. We're just going through the documentation. It's not going to be the end of the world. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, this is a little big. Maybe I can move it later. So I'm going to click on this. And now I should be able to move this object. So I'm going to click Escape. And I should be able to click this view and move it down. I don't really need this to go off the page. That's completely unprofessional. And, you know, I try to at least act professionally. And if I just give myself a little bit more space. All right. And we can change the views around if we wanted to. There we go. We're just going to kind of show you how to make a detailed section view. So if you make this drawing and you have it set up like this and it's all of its cattywampus glory, uh, we're going to make a detail view by just clicking on the little circle with an A. And what you want to do is find the spot where you want to kind of zoom in. Let's just say that this edge is going to be like really interesting to us. So we're going to click on the edge and it's going to bring out a circle. Uh, when you get it to the right size of the circle that you want, go ahead and click again, and it will create a zoomed-in view that you can use as a way to show your drawings inside a, a much more detailed perspective. Okay, so let's see how this one says Detail A. That's corresponding to the detailed section over here. And it lets you get a little bit of a closer examination of what's actually going on there. It's really useful in case your parts are really, really small. So that would be how you would create a detailed view. Okay, um, so that's an example of kind of what's going on here. So if you wanted to see like the actual fillet on the gear teeth or something like that. Okay. So what they want you to do is they want you to have a base view like this. They want you to create a side view and on the top to have a detailed view and then have an isometric view over on the side. Make sure that you use the appropriate scale. So don't have yourself a, a, a gigantic beam sticking out of the entire page. I know I'm using a size paper, but you can still make it scaled down to be the right amount. Um, this one looks like it's a scale of four to one. That's quite a bit. All right, so then what they want you to do is they want you to dimension the multi-view, provide the overall width, height, and depth dimensions as shown in figure five, which is this one down here. They want you to actually show the dimensioning on the, the depth of the object, okay? Dimension the detail view to fully specify the features of the part shown in that view. And if necessary, and as space on the drawing permits, increase the scale of the detail view so that it clearly shows necessary dimensions. Uh, let's see here. So it says, hey, by the way, you won't be able to add all the dimensions necessary to fully detail the part, like the 0 .051 dimension shown, without dimensioning to hidden lines. For now, you do not need to place dimensions other than the overall depth on the right side view. You'll add more dimensions in this drawing in the next activity.
Okay, so we're going to try to take these objects and we're going to, in all of our cattywampus glory, we're going to try to determine what the width is. So I'm going to try to go to dimension and let's see here. Here it is. And we're going to just click on the left side and click on the right side. And that should give us a sense of the length of it. It's supposed to be five units long, but since it's cattywampus, it's actually cutting off a several thou because it's only measuring from one side to the other side. This is because I'm terrible. And if I download a file, hopefully when I download the file correctly, it will actually give you a part that is like not cattywampus. Or we may just have to go in and change the part to where it like is not going to be like completely cattywampus on us. So I'm going to put out the depth of this and if I wanted to uh, input some information about the end of this object uh, I think that the fillet on the outside is probably pretty important or the rounded edge uh, the diameter of the slot in the middle is probably pretty important and let's see here um, how about because we already have the thickness from the left to the right hand side I believe that was gathered down here so we've already got that thickness we don't need to put it twice um, we might need to know the thickness of the actual material, so I can try to get uh, one radius in and then another radius, but it doesn't look like it wants to. Uh, how about, okay, let's not try not to use the radius. How about I use the two straight lines? It's still the same thickness. So I'm going to go dimension. I'm going to go line, line, and then that's going to give me like 0.39. So that at least tells me the thickness of the outer rails, and that goes around for everything inside. So that should give us a lot of information that we need. Okay, so uh, this is how I'm going to leave this alone for part one. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to straighten this part out, make it not as cattywampus so that you can actually use it in on shape without it going insane. Uh, and then you should be able to dimension the parts and it should look uh, a lot cleaner. So like instead of 4.979, it should just say five. And then for the 0.789, I think that's just supposed to be 0.8. So I'm going to try to straighten out that file before I link it to you guys. Uh, have a great day and I will talk at you later for part two.